Welcome to the Yard of Sydney. Hi, Claudia, and hi, Bassi. Hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for joining in today, all the way from Romania. How's that? Wow. All the way from Romania. So, I'm Helder Fernandez, and I'll be showing you today a little bit of this beautiful studio. This is Black Douglas. So, a little bit about yourself to the viewers. There's a distinct style that is accredited to the Black Douglas name, as you might have figured out. There is a website with, that highlights the thought process in my works. All of my artworks carry a trademark, a big sun or a big moon. We have some of the biggest skies on the planet and um, tends to complement quite large suns and moons and they've always been a, a part. And um, spiritually speaking, that's the grandmother and grandfather spirit. Uh, I use an effect here where um, once the, the background colour is painted, uh, then you coat that colour with a, a cracking medium, which is a, a gel that once one dries, I dollop on the yellow here and leave it under a slow moving ceiling fan overnight and you come uh, get this cracked effect. I'm trying to show in the, in the sun and in the landscape here, um, the texture of the drying up of the continent. And the drying up of the planet, and um, so uh, before the waters rise again, of course. So we're in that phase, and I think these paintings will be, if we all survive in the future, that will be um, commemorative to an era that we're witnessing a global warming. We all know that the rivers are the arteries of the and the veins of the planet, and so for Aboriginal people here, it's a very important thing to have natural water. Um, as we go that way. Um, take note of the, the remnants of the tape. So when I peel the tape off the canvas, once I've masked up, um, I don't just create landfill. Rather, I'm intending to create uh, several large rondel sculptural pieces. And I'll figure out what I'm going to do with those at the point. But um, they, they, they do become sculptural. And I think that it's a beautiful um, uh, a compliment to what I'm painting here. And so um, my last tape ball ended up about uh, just under a metre in diameter, and we can see one that's progressing over here, which is, um, um, we've actually started at the beginning of this year. So uh, there's a lot of stuff happening. Perfect, let's go over there. Ted mentioned, there we go. <laughs> so we get this massive, uh, Tape ball, and um, that started from that. So you can see this piece here as the top end of this continent, now named Australia. And um, the reason for doing so is it further complements, or actually adds a cryptic message. I'm trying to shy away from too much heavy political content in this body of work, which is quite a challenge for me because if you look at the website, then, um, you know, it's my, my stuff has been known for um, for rocking the boat. But um, I'm trying to find ways of making it a little bit more cryptic um, yeah. as, a, as a comment. So, by using the top end of the continent, um, we're making reference to the... Um, the most racist states in Australia. Um, uh, whereas in America, um, people refer to the deep south as the most racist places. Uh, we refer to the deep north. And so that'd be Queensland and Northern Territory. We have the most draconian governments and the worst effect on indigenous people on this continent. And so here's a little example of using the top, the, the top end. And also when you're referencing Aboriginal art, um, it's the go-to places for re referencing Aboriginal art are the remaining tribal areas or the remote region areas and they're all in the Northern Territory and, and they're um, in the top end of uh, Queensland and Torres Strait Islands and so by just making a simple, a simple um, half continent as a rocky outcrop it's distinctly referencing all of the stuff that us as urban Indigenous artists talk about. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put a bit of um, greenery onto the continent, on, onto the rocky outcrop, and um, just using um, a bit of coagulated green paint that has sat for a while, which is really good for getting this kind of feel, rather rather than it being too runny. Just using imagination and filling in little bits where you can imagine that greenery might grow, uh, as in foliage on the landscape. It's beautiful. You know, when you're creating the sun, well, what are the, um, the way that you choose the colours? Because I noticed with the other one, it's all red inside, and uh, I just see that bit of yellow coming through, which reminds me of the glass drying the heater represent the heat and part of why the cracking is happening but good question because this series I'm also um, I'll just grab a, a piece that's in the process of the month. we've got seven distinct spots on that sky and um, uh, it's representative of the fragmentation of the dreamings of Aboriginal peoples across this continent and um, it kind of also, it's, a, it's a, a double entendre, if you will, because it's referencing the seven points on the Commonwealth star, which is the largest star on the Australian flag. That's five states and two territories. And so I try to um, now, as one of my cryptic metaphors, it's, um, it's showing how you see a big, beautiful blue open sky, but um, uh, even the skyways are owned by the government today, whereas um, the sky was an important, is an important element for the dreamings of Aboriginal people. And so I fragment the skies into um, seven, seven distinct spots and variate, um, make a variation of the tone just to give that appearance of looking at a horizon. Perfect. Um, yeah. Absolutely love that. I want to know if there's any questions out there, if you guys want to know and have any questions. I was just going to say thank you very much. That was really, really interesting um, presentation. And I love the story about the suns and how you dry, how you dry them to give that uh, that feeling of, of the landscape. That's, that's just uh, really, really interesting. And and also your story about the rivers and the importance of the rivers and how the, how you try to maintain that 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 uh, vein-like uh, feeling within within the presentations, within the images. So, tremendous. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. Black Douglas, thank you so much. It's uh, just, just uh, a beautiful color appreciation to uh, for, uh, that you explained uh, about your passion and the background behind it. I actually have a question as well. I keep seeing this painting here and I've been meaning to ask you, what is this self-portrait? Ah, I wish, I wish I was that good looking. Um, well, so long as it doesn't leave the, the viewer base, uh, you're looking at this year's Archibald uh, Ooh, portrait. Maybe we should enjoy it. And uh, so I've got an um, amazing subject here, uh, Duan Hussein. Um, Duan Hussein is the uh, star of his own documentary titled In My Blood It Runs. It's a beautiful story about uh, trials and tribulations of a young Aboriginal boy from a remote community who has inherited the powers of healing from his uh, grandfather, yet he's still um, expected to get good marks in school. So it's a classic, um, you know, Aboriginal culture versus uh, mainstream curriculum. Double O Tundra. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, some people out there that don't know what the Archibald is, what is the Archibald Prize? The Archibald Prize is the most famous art prize on this continent here, and it's one of the most famous portrait prizes in the world. I'm going to take a, you on a little tour of the studio. Um, as we can see, we're making the most of this beautiful space. Um, first and foremost is uh, the importance of a beautiful lounge setting. So um, I create my faux uh, dealer's lounge, if you will. But over on the far wall, you can see um, We've got the uh, the Win Prize uh, finalists from last year. So uh, the Win Prize is the Landscape Art Prize runs alongside the Archibald Prize. This is a um, a really beautiful piece, a very special piece because um, Auntie Elaine Russell, a very celebrated female Aboriginal artist, 
um, of the Gomoroi Nation, northwestern New South Wales. And um, she um, was a big influence on my work in the early days. You can pretty much see the, the similarities, um, i.e. the flat bottom clouds and the, the, the outlines around most of the um, foreground features. So uh, Auntie Elaine passed away in 2017. When I heard of her passing, I asked her son, did she have, did she have um, any paintings remaining? Because I really should have a piece of hers in my collection. Mind you, she's collected in most of the major institutions here. And um, he came to me with this piece here, which is detailed on my website and also on uh, Instagram. And the piece was unfinished and I finished the piece. And so it became a collaborative uh, between her and I and became a very special piece for me to enter into the wing. Here I've got the little Jarjams, little, little um, uh, 1960s Aboriginal garden statues of the two kids. Uh, once again, the little lad with the spear, he had featured in the same exhibition. He had his own prison cell. And what I did was I placed him in the corner of the cell that was slightly obscured. You could only look, you could only just see him by looking through the grate on the door where the food was served. And then over in the other corner, I had um, red and blue LED flashing lights. So he was only illuminated by police um, uh, lights. I'm just gonna pass it over to Helen now. And Helen is going to be telling us a little bit about Wendy Whiteley and um, a few of the struggles that are happening there right now as well with uh, the Secret Garden. She actually has trouble sometimes getting um, people to help volunteer in the garden. Wendy would be thrilled if you wanted to go on down there and help her and her team um, keep everything Thanks. going. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you on the next virtual tour. Thanks guys, great job.